Hey there, Posse. Today we're going to look at the 10 oldest wineries in America. But to make things a, a little bit more interesting, rather than just listing the 10 in order, we're going to take a, a, a virtual road trip together. I think this is going to be a lot of fun and kind of cool. Are you ready to hit it, the road? Come on, let's go. Hey there, Posse. I'm Pierre, and welcome to Ask the Wine Consultants. Now, in this episode, we're going to take a virtual road trip to the, the 10 oldest wineries in America. Now, while this is all just fun, you actually could use this video as a framework for your itinerary for your individual next road trip. Keep in mind, at any time, if you like what you hear, click like, subscribe, and hit the little bell so you'll be notified when there's a new post. Also, make sure you share this with your, your friends. I'm sure they would really appreciate it. First off, it's important to know that the United States has a long history of winemaking dating all the way back to the early 17th century. I, I would love for us to, to visit some of those early wineries. However, many of the, the early wine pioneers had a small, low production wineries that actually no longer exist. All right, let's get the, uh, the trip under, underway. Let's get started. Now, day one, New York. We'll visit Brotherhood Winery in uh, Washingtonville, New York. It claims to be the oldest continuously operating winery in the United States and was founded in 1839. It has a rich history of producing a variety of wines, including sparkling wines. Now, after a day of exploring this, this amazing landmark, let's overnight in the, the Hudson Valley or nearby. On day number two, we'll stay in New York State and explore other wineries in the Hudson Valley region. Here we'll visit the, the Great Western Winery in the Finger Lakes. Great Western is actually the fourth oldest winery and located in the, the Finger Lakes region. It was established in uh, 1860 and is now part of the, the Pleasant Valley Wine Company. It produces sparkling and traditional table wines. Now the Finger Lakes region has a lot to offer, so we'll stay another day in the area. Our day three visit is to Oneida Vineyards. Uh, it's the, the sixth oldest winery and was established in 1872. It was founded by Bishop Bernard McQuaid and is known for its sacramental and sweet Catawba wines. Now, on day four, we'll drive to Connecticut and visit uh, Old Newgate uh, Kunwara Winery. Old Newgate is the, the eighth oldest winery and is located in East uh, Granby, Connecticut. It was established in 18. 78 and is known for their their traditional winemaking techniques. We'll overnight in Connecticut. Day five we'll head over to New Jersey and visit the the Renault winery in uh, Egg Harbor City. It was founded in 1864 and is the fifth oldest winery. Renault is known for their fruit wines and sparkling wines. We'll catch another winery or two, and, and tonight we'll spend the night over in New Jersey. How are you doing there? Are you getting your route all set in your mind? If you are, write ASTI in the comments below. Are you ready to head west? On day six and seven, we'll travel through Michigan. We'll make it over to, to southwest Michigan where we'll uh, drop in on, on one or two vineyards. Uh, you'll find many of them just off the interstate, so it's not going to be hard to, to make connection with some of them. Uh, they're relatively easy to visit, and we'll spend the night in Michigan. Day number eight, we'll make our way west several hours to Chicago. This is a great spot to relax for the day and or maybe see some Chicago sights. Day nine, we'll drive to Wisconsin and visit 
a Wolsheim Winery located in a Prairie du Sac, Wisconsin. Wolsheim is the second oldest winery in the country and was founded in 1847. It's known for its Wisconsin grown uh, grape wines and their uh, historic winery building. Well, overnight in Wisconsin, <laughs> hey, you know, while we're in Wisconsin, you can't overlook eating some, some cheese curds, uh, with, while, again, while we're in Wisconsin. Now, at this point, this is where we need, have to make a decision. Uh, are we going to head home and pick up the next five another time? Be warned, to see the next five wineries will take a little bit of driving. I think I'm up for it. Are you ready? Come on, let's keep going. Day 10 and 11, we'll be on the road, but we're not going to, to waste a day, so we'll visit a winery or, or two as we go, even though they aren't on our uh, 10 oldest winery list. Since we're heading west from Wisconsin, I like the idea of stopping off in, in Galena, Illinois, or maybe visit the first designated AVA in the country. Now, an AVA is a governmental um, designation for a wine area, uh, and it stands for American Viticultural Area. Now, surprisingly, the first AVA is just outside St. Louis, Missouri. Also, a visit to the, the small, quaint community of Herman, Missouri, is a perfect layover. Herman was once the center of America's wine industry and is beaming with German heritage. We can explore the small cottages and soak in the town's historic charm. Then we'll overnight over in Texas. Day 12 will be in Denison, Texas. This is the home of T.V. Munson. <laughs> you might say, who? Well, uh, if you don't know, T.V. Munson is a, a really important, very important figure in the history of wine, not only in America, but globally. In the early to mid 1800s, uh, the insect phylloxera was destroying much of the grapevine and industry in Europe, particularly in France. So in 1850, T.V. Munson personally took thousands of grapevines to France. Those grapevines contained a, a natural immunity to phylloxera. He saved France's wine industry. His efforts were recognized by the French government, and today his life-size bronze statue stands tall in Bordeaux, France. So we definitely uh, need to pay homage to TV on this trip. Now to travel from Denison uh, to our first stop in California, uh, just outside San Francisco, will take us several days. But <laughs> no worries, because uh, there are quite a number of vineyards and wineries in southwest Texas and in the southwest United States. Actually, there are wineries in every state in the country. Arguably, the best sparkling wine coming out of the U.S. is made in New Mexico. So I'll plan to, to spend some time there en route to California. Feel free to do some of your own research about this part of the country and uh, get creative with your itinerary. Then expect to overnight in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'll meet you in Saratoga, California on the 18th day. That's just south of San Francisco. Today we'll stop in at, at uh, Montalvo Wines in Saratoga, uh, California. Uh, the ninth oldest winery in the country, Maltavo Wines, was founded in 1882 by Senator James F. Fair. It's one of the oldest wineries in California and is now known as Mountain Winery. It's primarily at this point a concert venue and produces wine uh, really on a pretty small scale. Now we'll overnight in the, the San Francisco Bay Area and explore the area and visit several other wineries that are relatively nearby. Uh, up next on day 19 is Buena Vista Winery, established in 1857. It's in Sonoma and is the, the third oldest winery in America and was founded by Count Augustin uh, Harrisvi. Uh, Buena Vista is really an edgy uh, winery and it's considered one of California's oldest premium wineries. You can overnight in either Sonoma or Napa. We can continue to, to explore Napa as long as we want and visit a heck of a lot more wineries. There's tons to be seen. 
Our next stop and on day 20 is Behringer Winery or Behringer Vineyards. Behringer is in St. Helena, California and was established by the, the Behringer Brothers in 1876. It's the seventh oldest winery in America and is one of the most well-known and respected wineries in Napa Valley. Now we'll also overnight in Napa once again. On day 21, in addition to, to visiting uh, a V. Centuri winery, we can explore other wineries in Napa. Established in 1885, Saturi is the 10th oldest winery and is one of Napa's historic wineries and is known for its uh, artisan approach to, to winemaking. <laughs> well, there you have it. We just finished our road trip of the 10 oldest wineries in America. <laughs> if you actually hit all those in just 21 days, I'll be impressed. Thankfully, we did this virtually, <laughs> you, know, you know, but folks, these wineries have played a significant role in the history of, of winemaking in the United States and continues to produce a wide range of wines contributing to the rich tradition of American viticulture. Now for you true wine lovers, I would encourage you to make uh, visiting all of these a priority. And remember to check for, for each winery's visiting hours tour availability and any reservation requirements before your trip, especially if you plan to, to visit multiple wineries in one day. Also, make sure you enjoy the scenic beauty and, and local attractions in the area, uh, in the areas you're visiting during your road trip. <laughs> well, there you have it. Maybe we can take another road trip uh, like this in the future. Let me know where you'd like to go. Until then, Cheers. Hey Posse, thanks so much for investing the time to watch this video. I trust it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And please consider hitting subscribe. Oh, and be sure to check out these other videos. Until next time, cheers.